All right, folks, welcome back to the EAL Course Vlogs, where we're going to hit the back nine of Pacific Dunes. We're going to light it up on the first two holes with double back-to-back -back par threes. Very exciting, something that you don't see very often, especially on the Pacific Ocean in the state of Oregon. Very excited to take part in uh, one of Tom Doak's worldly puzzles that he's created for us all here at Bandon Dunes. Let's get right into it. Tenth hole, playing 165 today. I've got a seven iron. Teed it up kind of high and just let it float up there. Felt really good about it. Sorry you can't see the green from this shot. We ended up just right of the pin and a little long. Birdie try is going to be about 30 feet. And these greens are all very undulating, as you'll see from all of the vlogs at Bandon Dunes. Felt really good about this putt. Just kind of burned the edge. And the comebacker is child's play, a.k.a. super confusing. And I struggle with these putts at courses like this. The 11th. Perhaps the signature hole, even though most architects and golf courses in general hate that term. I don't mind it. The 11th hole is stunning, and it does not suit my eye. Most par threes on the ocean do not. This should be an easier shot, except for some reason, I just keep visualizing the ball snap hooking into the water. Playing 135 today into the wind. Nine iron is the club for me. and basically score a, it, it was a well-struck shot. It, it had everything I wanted about it except where it ended up, which is I've, my feet are kind of four inches above this ball, and uh, really, I can't even get, I'm like a dog who's got to go to the bathroom. I just can't get comfortable over this ball. Really happy with the shot I hit, though, I, I will say. Um, hard to put too much mustard on this hot dog because the ocean is ever looming. So very happy with that and just, you know, fine. Fine with me. A-OK -okay. on the green. Uh, about a 15-footer here for a par that almost goes in. I, I really thought it was going to make it. Um, unfortunately... I felt the same way about the comebacker. And this is kind of the Bandon Dune story. It's sort of problem, sort of, uh, and other, I think that caught the lip. I've, I mean, if I had a dollar for every lip I caught at Bandon, I'd probably get a free round of golf. On to the 12th, folks. This hole is really an incredible and breathtaking experience. From the 11th green you sort of hike up and traverse this area it's 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 one of the longer walks from green to tea which truly on a course like this i don't mind it's a walk in nature beautiful morning this is perfect golf weather 55 degrees and nice and crispy um this one just really let this one sail wide right if i was at the uh old course on 17 i probably would have hit someone in the head at the uh old course hotel Luckily, no spectators. Did end up finding the ball in this really fascinating situation here with gorse all around. And ultimately, the only shot here is a nine iron just without a backswing. Get it back in play. I'm basically where I was a second ago, but now I have a shot. Um, and we've got nine iron still coming in. And this, again, is a par five. Clean shot, felt pretty good about it. And here we have 135 in the pack. The, the, the flag is tucked on the left, not the uh, green over there on the right. And uh, again, nine iron. I don't really know what happened here. The ball was a bit on an upslope. I thought it was enough to get there. Somehow it just didn't go anywhere. And I don't really know what happened. We're still about 40 feet short of the hole with our par putt. So, trying to get this close. And just very hard to read that break. That mound on the left is but. complex. And uh, caught a little lip here. Getting more of the lip, at least. Another double bogey. Four over, headed to the 13th hole. 
This one is a beast as well. Like this stretch of holes here on the back nine, I think is some of the best golf in the world. Um, this is a really fun hole because it's a big fairway. It's a long tee shot. Um, I've got 390. It's it's not a long hole. 390 isn't a long hole, but into the wind, you got to remember it's probably playing 420, and the back tees are an extra 50 yards. Roasted yes. a draw up there. Felt really good about it. And here we have uh, 97 in. So this is a pretty good drive. 290 into the wind like that. A little bird flying by. Check him out. He's like, oh, we're playing a little golf, I see, huh? And here we go back to one of the earlier shots I hit in the day where I've got 97 yards, and I just grabbed this little choke down pitching wedge. Happy with that shot. Yeah, dude. Very much so. Close. Yeah, dude. That was close. Trotting my way off to the green. Here we've got a chance to make a birdie, folks. And I really, you know, this is one of these chances where this for me with at least my level of a short game right now on trips like this where I'm sort of playing a lot, this is where I'm going to score when I can put the ball really, really, really close to the hole. So they don't come by that often. Got to take advantage. Nice birdie putt on the way. Thank you, everyone at Pacific Dunes for putting the hole where it is today. Okay, so here is one of my favorite par threes on earth. I don't know why. It just sort of sets up. It looks nice. You've got a massive climb from the 13th green to the 14th tee, and you're kind of like on top of the world. It's not a long hole. It plays downwind. 145 from the tips. I got 128 from the greens, and today it's playing 140. So I settle on pitching wedge because it's at the back of the green. I don't want to go too far. And for some reason, I always play this hole really well. I, I don't think I've ever missed this green. Oh, there you go. Now I'm going to miss it next time I play it. But uh, pretty good tee shot. A little short, and we're fine with it. Sort of layers coming on and off. Just sort of the weather is just playing tricks on us. I thought this was good. I've kind of been struggling uh, at all the courses at Bandon with over-reading the break. Uh, but a tap-in par on one of my favorite par threes is a fun experience. And here we have a chance to really... Um, you know, on the tee box here, I'm thinking birdie, birdie, because this is a 504 downwind par five. If I catch this clean, I should have a mid iron in my hand. And really, you know, looking at that bunker on the right, thinking high draw. And um, actually, it came out according to plan. Here we have 178 in. So if you're doing the math, that is a 320 yard drive which mostly is downhill, downwind. Um, so here I have a seven iron in my hands and unfortunately kind of catch it off the heel and it ends up a uh, short right of the green. You know, a little bit disappointed about this one, I'll be honest. You know, these are one of these opportunities where it's like, you know, I've got a mid iron in my hand. I should be able, I have been able to, I want to be able to get this close and sink the putt to get two back and go to one over on the back nine instead of three over. Um, so now we've got an Eagle chip coming and you know, these are not the easiest chips here. So I'm not going to chip it at all. I'm going to use the putter and ultimately first putt a little long, leaving me with sort of a treacherous birdie putt here that doesn't lip out it really just rides right over the lip tap in par you know this is one of these things where if i'm on a trip and i'm playing a lot of golf this is sort of the part that goes it's 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 sort of exhaustion and it's a lot of golf so you know i don't stress out too much but uh but anyway nice par eric good job 16th hole 338 um playing uh playing about that this hole kind of bends around to the right that gorse there on the straight ahead is about 305 to get in so downwind i'm not going to hit driver here i was thinking about driving the green um but ultimately decided that i didn't want to find a tremendous amount of trouble so grabbed the five wood here and um you know just tried to tried to stay patient in the swing tried to let the backswing kind of take care of itself 
nice patient swing, pretty happy with that. And I don't, it, it, it was a pretty high shot. Ended up just to the left here is where the gorse is. So that must have flown in the high 200s. And, you know, here's a moment where we were talking uh, with my friends Connor and Jake who are helping me make these videos and take some photos. Uh, we were talking about how I once went to golf church on the Champions Tour. We went to a went to a, a church uh, meeting on a Friday night, and it was with all of these super famous, well known pro golfers. And at the end of the of the uh, church meeting, they said, you know, in closing, may the wind always be at your back, and may you play with the joy you had as a child. And I tried to bring that vibe into this 58 degree wedge from 60 yards, and we really thought it was going to go in and it was kind of one of these moments of like, that's exciting. You know what I mean? And, and in some ways that's the golf demon is, is really trying to summon whatever it is that's between you and a good shot. Ironically here on this birdie putt, which I really wanted to make. And I thought was in, I mean, technically I guess that's a double, but we're going to give that as a tap in. I mean, that's fine. Good par on to 17. This is, a monster and final par three at Pacific Dunes. This tee box here is uh, 189. Uh, I've got it 200 on the gun, downhill into the wind. Um, I have a five iron in my hands because I don't want to go long. And it hit one of the worst shots of the entire trip here. This five iron just sailed to the right. It was, uh, it just went out into no man's land. And basically, basically didn't want to hang out with me anymore, which is fine. Re T, same club, different guy. This thing on a laser to the flag. I thought it was going to go in, one. and I thought I was going to have one of the best pars of my life. Dude, go in. <sighs> Again, this putt, eight feet, just outside my comfort range. Overread it again, double bogey. 18, folks. 18's a really jarring hole. There's no place to go. Over the green right there is about 270. The hole in total plays 575, 590 from the tips. Um, you can kind of cover that bunker there. Fortunately, I had a pretty bad tee shot, but ultimately just ended up in this bunker and... Um, just trying to take this seven iron and catch it clean. Um, hit a really good shot out of here. These are some of my favorite shots where you're just forced into something. Caught it nice and clean. And here we have 120. And so I grab the 50 degree and that should be about a 120 club downwind. Um, I'm thinking just sort of get it on the front edge and let it roll down. Trundle. It did not roll down. It just kind of sat there. So here we have about 20 feet for birdie. And this thing ran as far away from me as that tee shot on 17. Just couldn't. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it was a misread. I mean, I, I hit it pretty hard. I hammered it. If I'm being totally honest. So good luck making par. And uh, you know, in the end here, little comebacker. Can it happen? Total misread, three cups away. I thought it was going left. Yeah, so little tap in for a three putt here. Thank you for watching the Pacific Dunes course vlog where you saw every shot of mine on my way to shooting 81 at Tom Doak's masterpiece at Bandon Dunes. Check out the other videos from Bandon Dunes we shot at the original course Bandon Dunes, Sheep Ranch, Old Mac, and Bandon Trails. Thanks for watching everybody and have a great round.